Hi, and welcome back to the channel of the College Process. Once again, I'm Ed from Principia Prep, and today we're going to be going over co-op programs versus internship programs, how they work, and which is better for you. But before we begin, if you are new to the channel and are looking for additional college content, please hit the subscription button down below. It will notify you when new videos do come out. As well as if you do enjoy today's video, please leave us a like. It does help the channel. As well as, once again, if you have any questions, very simple, just leave your questions down below in the comment section. I do answer all your comments and questions down below. As well as, once again, we are still running it for this year's senior class 21-22, the James Wilson Memorial Scholarship. If you want to be eligible for that, very simple. Just watch this in the description down below, the link to the video here, explaining how the scholarship works for our organization. As well as, also down in the description is the organization's Venmo, as well as our Bias Coffee, if you want to help support the channel, allowing us to keep making these college videos for you guys out there. And all that being said, let's jump right into today's video, co-op programs versus internship programs, how they work, and which is better fit for the student. Now, before we go into co-ops and internships, let me first explain essentially what they are and how they work, because both these terms, co-ops and internships, have been used interchangeable over the last couple of years here, and they're really very different from each other. So right off the bat, let's talk about what a co-op is. Now, essentially, a co-op is short for cooperative education. It's basically a balance of classroom learning with periods of on-hand experience in the real world, essentially, where your student actually leaves the classroom setting and doesn't go back until they finish with their co-op. Basically, a student's able to interchange, kind of go back and forth between doing the education part, going into the real world, that's called the field of study they're in, into the real world aspects of it and working in that field, and then coming back to the classroom. So they're gaining valuable experience while also studying their field. Now, usually most co-ops last anywhere from 3 to 12 months, so they have a pretty good long amount of time here we're talking about. Now, on the other hand, internships are a little bit different in the sense that, yes, they do provide valuable work experience within the field that student has chosen. However, internships are more typically on the part-time basis, let's call it, as far as a part-time job. So an internship, essentially, you're still going to class. Let's say you can go to class in the morning during the fall semester and then do your internship in the, in the, in the afternoon. Where the co-op, you completely stop your classes at almost every co-op. So you stop all your classes and you go into a full-time work week, let's call it. So you go to school, then you go in your co-op, and you come back to school. It's essentially how co-op works where the internship in the fall and spring, you can be taking classes and doing your internship. And also, of course, many students do internships in the summer, but those are also shorter in time span as well. Most of the time, if you're doing a summer internship, these things last anywhere from six to eight weeks. So they're very short compared to the co-op, which is typically three months on the, on the low end, all the way up to a year. Now, also, another difference between them is, since many internships are smaller in scale as far as a commitment and time, some of these things are not paid. But don't worry, doesn't mean all internships are not paid, but typically all co-ops, by the way, are paid, with some exceptions, essentially, is that when it comes to the internships, you're usually working just a few hours during the week. When it comes to the co-op, most students are working anywhere from 35 to 40 hours in the co-op. So the internship essentially is, in some cases, a fraction, if not less than half the amount of time spent than the co-op students are spending in their field. Now, if you're worried about your financial aid situation, but let's say you're thinking, okay, I'd rather do the internship because my student will make less money or make no money, so it doesn't affect the financial aid, versus the co-op if they're working 35 or 40 hours, maybe they're gonna make a ton of money and it's gonna affect our financial aid and we're gonna lose all the grants and so on and so forth we're getting from the college. But don't worry about it. Most, if not basically all co-op programs, whatever money your student makes during the co-op program, whatever money that is for the, whether the semester or the whole year, does not affect their financial aid whatsoever. So don't worry about your student going and doing co-op and making a bunch of money. It's not going to affect your financial aid eligibility. If the schools understand how it works, and they're not going to use it against you. So right at the top, the first big difference, obviously, is a time commitment between the co-ops and the internships, where the co-ops are essentially full-time work, where the internships are essentially part-time work. And the second big difference is here, pretty much all the co-ops, by the way, are paid, where some internships are not paid. So then obviously here, the payment, how much your student will be paid to do an internship versus how much your student will be paid to do a co-op, now, a third big difference here between the co-ops and the internships is because of the fact that your student, in some cases, can do a year-long co-op, typically what happens here is they're adding more time to the college, let's call it four-year period. Most students go in and out of college, or traditionally we presume them to go in and out of college within a four-year time frame. Now, obviously, due to different aspects, more students are taking five years and longer, so on and so forth, but traditionally, the four-year time frame to graduate college is kind of what everyone understands as far as the path of going to college, we're here for four years, 
we live, we leave, and then we end up going to work, essentially. In the world of co-ops, typically if your student does a year-long co-op, they will take that four-year time frame and technically turn it into a five-year time frame. So that does not, by the way, happen with internships. It's very rare, if not never happens, by the way, that your students are doing an internship and it adds an extra semester or an extra year onto their four-year path. But for co-ops, it is common. Now, obviously that third difference here between them, the fact that you could add another semester or add another year, obviously brings up the financial aid again. And parents wonder, since many colleges only provide financial assistance typically for four years, especially their own institutional money, obviously the school's grant money, the school's scholarship money, if that free money is gone after four years, how does it affect us if we're going to be going there for five years because of the fact that we have that one extra semester or that one extra year because of the co-op? And I would not worry about this because of the fact that colleges also take this into consideration, the fact that if your student will take an extra semester because of the co-op or an extra year because of the co-op, it will not affect your financial aid eligibility. They will still give you all four years of eligibility when your student comes back from that co-op. So taking that extra semester or extra year is not that big of a deal, I guess let's call it in the grand scheme of things. And also another thing to consider too, another big difference, a fourth difference here is for many internships, good, bad, or indifferent, students don't end up keeping the job. Just the reality of it, some of these students do these things in sophomore year or junior year as far as an internship, and the company in some cases is not going to wait a year or two to bring your student in, or in some cases they have other interns coming in, or they just use the internship program just for basic level stuff like answering phones or filing stuff. So some cases a student doesn't end up working out where they get the job through the internship. For the co-ops, the co-ops have a high acceptance rate as far as them getting the job that they worked at. In fact, over 60% of students that do co-ops typically end up getting an offer from the co-op they work for. So it's obviously a very big benefit here. So we have a job waiting for us when we graduate if we do a co-op. So the question always pops up for families out there wondering and watching the video, well, Ed, what's the better idea for my student? What makes more sense? Does the internship make more sense or does the co-op make more sense? Now, right off the bat, good, bad, or indifferent, unfortunately, every college does not offer a co-op, by the way. All colleges do offer internships, so that's another big difference here, I guess the fifth big difference here between all of the internship and co-op situations here. Almost every school is going to give you an internship opportunity somewhere, where many schools do not offer co-ops. In fact, here are some of the schools that do offer co-ops here, some of the more prevalent schools that everyone knows about, as far as here in the Northeast especially, Northeastern, Drexel, Stevens, so on and so forth. But there are other colleges out there, by the way, besides those ones I just mentioned. As you can see here, there's a bunch of them out there that do co-ops. But co-ops are not as prevalent as the internship programs are. So if you're weighing the options between an internship and a co-op, and you're thinking about, does it make more sense to go to a school that will only offer internships or a school that does have the co-op available? The way I look at it is very simple. If my student doesn't know what they want to do, and believe it or not, many students have no idea what they want to do. If they don't know what they want to do, I'd rather go towards the internship possibility because of the fact it's more of a part-time job, which means they can do a bunch of them in different fields, vastly different fields, to be honest with you, and kind of figure out, do I like this? Do I not like this kind of situation? And not be fully committed, let's call it, because of the fact they don't have to leave school for this. And also, they're only doing it part-time. And if they do it over the summer, it's six to eight weeks. It's not that long or time frame. If my student does know what they want to do or have a good sense of the specific field they want to go into, like nursing, engineering, computer science, mathematics, you know, this kind of stuff, they know kind of like where I want to be in life as far as a career path or at least an idea, the realm of where I want to go, then I'd rather go with the co-op opportunity. Because the co-op opportunity is going to give that student an idea, basically in a real world setting, full-time job, by the way, so there's nothing else going on other than that co-op. So they get to be immersed in it to basically reinforce what they thought. Either yes, this is the direction I want to go in, or no, this is not the direction I want to go in, but maybe I can find something within this field, within this realm, that makes more sense to me. So that's kind of the way I look at it. If you're fully committed to what you want to do, I'd rather lean towards a co-op if they're available to you. If you're not certain what you want to do, or you have no idea at all what you want to do, I'd rather go towards the internship because it has less of a commitment here involved. And all that being said, if you have any questions or any concerns, if you have anything you need to ask about me from the uh, video here today, very simple. Down below, just leave your comments and questions. I do leave all your comments and questions. I do answer them. I, I do answer all your comments and questions you guys leave down below. As well, as if you did enjoy today's video, please leave us a like. It does help the channel. As well as on the screen is my contact information. If you need any help with any of the process for college, whether it be the admissions or financial aid or anything else really, I do do one-on-one -on -one meetings with parents. I do help them out for the entire college process. On the screen is actually my cell phone number. The easiest and fastest way to reach me is either send me a text message or just send me an email. Those are the two fastest way to reach me. I typically get back to text messages and email, typically within about 24 to 48 hours. 
You can also call, but it does take a little bit longer to get a hold of me typically. But other than that, thank you for watching today's video. Once again, my name is Ed Zamora from Principia Prep.